not just women are in danger, but all marginalized people. We're being uniquely different right now might truly be considered a crime. It seems as though we had all slipped into a false sense of comfort, that justice would prevail and that good would win in the end. Well, good did not win this election, but good will win in the end. So what today means is that we are far from the end. Today marks the beginning, the beginning of our story. The revolution starts here. The fight for the right to be free, to be who we are, to be equal. Let's march together through this darkness and with each step know that we are not afraid. That we are not alone. That we will not back down. That there is power in our unity and that no opposing force stands a chance in the face of true solidarity. And to our detractors that insist that this march will never add up to anything, Boston Red here with Friday Java, a weekly magazine of political theory, polling, and commentary. It is part of the people history called people that make up this fascinating journey. We are part of the Obama network. For that, we make no apologies. What we pledge to do is give you the facts on a bridge to history. What body politics is, the most up-to-date theories of political science and cephalogy. Stay tuned for this incredible ride. Boston Red, peace out. Friday Java on the 29th of November 2019 from WBRN Radio and on the Boston Red Network. Boston Red here in the Jerry Pippen Broadcast Booth. Our friends at the uh, University of Virginia, Charlottesville, are not with us uh, today, but we still remember Heather Heyer, who was uh, murdered in downtown Charlottesville by white supremacists, brought on by the current political environment that uh, moves across the U.S. Our Thanksgiving show, uh, we invite you to listen to it because there we highlighted the development of the right wing, particularly in the working class. There was a candidate that literally was running for uh, Lunchbox Joe Biden's seat in uh, Delaware after he became vice president in uh, 2010. Nonetheless, they had a primary there, and uh, she was running against a Republican named Castle, a millionaire. She defeated Castle and went on to take on uh, Senator Coons, who is still a senator from Delaware, and lost. But if you look back at some of the polls, one of the polls, Rasmussen had her ahead by two points, and another one of their polls, I believe it was one of their polls, had her uh, very close in the race. But it did not occur, and at that time, the Tea Party was the motivating element. It's interesting to look at uh, nine, almost ten years ago, what was going on in the U.S., and how people were uh, mobilized uh, at that particular time. If you recall, uh, we had uh, the um, Tea Party Express. They were instrumental in the victory out in Alaska of a character named uh, Joe Gunner Miller. He's running against McCoskey, uh, the current senator from Alaska. And she was forced into a write-in vote, uh, and that's very, very unusual. And in Alaska, literally the people were forced to write her name in and memorize the spelling of McCoskey. 
is a Polish name. Anyway, nonetheless, uh, she did win th- uh, that particular race, and I think Gunnar Joe tried to run once again, but he is now a history. Um, I don't know what happened to Gunnar Joe. He's the same place with this character called Working Class uh, Christine O'Donnell. No idea what she's doing. She was out of New Jersey, but not unusual, uh, from New Jersey or uh, from Philadelphia to uh, Delaware is a very short distance to walk, very compact area they were dealing in. But the politics uh, at that time started to uh, form. And we had these uh, right-wing groups behind the Tea Party. Of course, what they were doing, they were talking about such things as deficit spending. There was not much emphasis on immigration at that time, uh, but they did uh, focus on abortion. Uh, They were anti-abortion. That was one of their social issues. They brought in evangelicals into that particular equation and also uh, working uh, as you'll hear hear when you listen to that episode, Christine O'Donnell talking about uh, common sense and she emphasized uh, private creation of jobs in uh, Delaware. You were coming out of a depression. There was very little private (laughs) jobs there, but these little subliminal, uh, not quite subliminal, I should say, talking points were in her campaign. It was uh, to herd, I guess is a good word, working people uh, towards uh, the uh, capitalist order. There's no doubt about that. And, of course, Bernie Sanders at that time uh, was, let me think, where was Bernie? Uh, Bernie was in the Senate. He was long serving in the House from Vermont. And then he was in the uh, Senate. He may have been in his first term. I have to check back on that one. Because Bernie, Bernie, I believe, is in his third term now. Anyway, uh, nonetheless, uh, that uh, we didn't have that type of situation. We had elected Barack Obama, which at that time, on the Yes We Can, was the most progressive uh, president we'd had for a very, very, very long uh, time. The uh, last president we had at, at that time was looked at with Jimmy Carter. was looked at as a uh, moderate uh, president uh, there. And then we had the center-right president of uh, Bill Clinton. And his uh, collaboration with, the, with businesses, etc., where he deregulated virtually everything, ended welfare as we know it, and that sort of thing. So that, in other words... That was the answer, uh, and you had a character named Newt Gingrich, who was still around, had the House, and of course they tried to impeach Bill Clinton, and it fell short. But that was on a situation involving an intern, a totally different situation from the criminality that you have in this particular uh, impeachment uh, process, what has happened so far. So that is basically where we are, and how how we started to get here. And the conspiracy theorists played a very big role in that particular situation because the conspiracy theories as themselves were uh, nothing uh, more than fake news, alternative facts. But they didn't call them alternative facts. You didn't hear the word uh, fake news. But this was used as a technique to organize these elements. And they were indeed organized where the uh, right could depend on these, and you had militias in there, could depend on these people to vote for them. And the Republican Party utilized those people to elect their uh, candidates based upon basically uh, abortion, affirmative action, uh, etc., and President Obama because of the color of his skin. Uh, That is how we get to where we are now and of course you look back on the 2016 election voter suppression was involved in it a lot of voter suppression a lot of scraping as they call it that's taking people off the voter rolls was involved there uh, you would have had uh, a governor abrams in uh, georgia had that not happened so it had very real consequences and then we had this hysteria as i see it uh, from at this mic on this uh, so-called russian interference a situation which was involving the usual corporates, corporates, uh, Facebook, for instance, and they are still there. And uh, we had something called Cambridge Analytica that were guiding these commercials, these targeted commercials, 
at uh, various people and coupled with the conspiracy theories and those kinds of things they ripple through a lot of communities to dep- uh, depress uh, voting there such as uh, the the uh, the situation there uh, super predators uh, that was uh, brought out and rehearsed out and of course that pointed towards Hillary Clinton and the past regime of her husband while Bill Clinton uh, played uh, somewhat into it but the type of campaign that she ran, she ran the most racist campaign in American history against Barack Obama. So those bridges were already uh, burnt. So that further uh, suppressed uh, turnout in places like Philadelphia, Milwaukee, etc. But that is not the case today as we saw in Louisiana. Followers of O.J. Simpson, the African Americans turned out in, in a great numbers there. And we're starting to look at uh, some of the polling and now how it is turning uh, of course, that polling is uh, focused on Iowa and New Hampshire, but we do have nationwide polling. A little different situation, a highly uh, fluid uh, situation that we have. Let's see, to get up to date on a little bit of the international news, D.J. Trump, the president, had uh, arrived in Afghanistan, the Bagram Air Force Base outside of Kabul. He uh, served a turkey dinner and served up peace process that they're now engaging the Taliban. And we'll see how that works out. But the way he presented it, uh, it's like he was saying the deal. He was still back uh, in the 80s in the art of the deal or whatever the deal is. And he ended it, the note on a positive. He said, well, we'll ma- the Taliban is going to make this deal with me because of the work that you did. And that's very interesting in the type of uh, rhetoric he's engaged in uh, is always ended on a positive. The American people are at the core an optimistic people and a positive people. And if you go out with just a negative, Americans hate people that are negative. They despise them and see them over time as losers. And, in fact, that's what they are. So that that is where that comes out. So that is one of those situations, if you ever go to D.J. Trump's, uh, one of his uh, stream of consciousness speeches, or talk to him on the phone, or meet him in a small meeting, he always walks in. I recall a meeting where he walked in and he started praising the people in the in the room. At that time, he was in the affirmative act. He praise these women as the greatest uh, construction uh, types uh, in the world, etc., and the people of color in general in there as uh, the great contributions they were going to give to the construction industry for the simple reason he was in construction, building hotels, etc. And he was hiring these uh, people of color, African Americans, Latinos, etc., and women as subcontractors to fulfill the obligations of the law. And to exist in the construction business, you need to do that. Same reason you need to work with uh, the building trade unions, which he worked with uh, at there. So, in other words, this is a spin that he put on it. As you see, much of the spin on his Twitter feeds is in the negative. It is showing uh, flaws or made-up flaws in various characters that testified before the committees. Incidentally, while we are on this, the committee hearings, House Intelligence Committee, live hearings, have basically concluded they are writing a report. Now, they've not said they will not have some more uh, witnesses, but that action had moved to the Judiciary Committee on to Mr. Nagler. And that committee is now, will have a day, I, I believe it's next week, where they will call in various uh, scholars, legal scholars, on the impeachment process. And there they've invited uh, President Trump to send his representatives, and sometime he can appear in person. And m- our advice to him is uh, to work it out, appear, make a statement, but not take any questions, but just appear and make a statement. He'll have hundreds of millions of viewers to see him live to make his statement. And then simply just leave the room and turn it over to his minions or his uh, legal excuse me, quote-unquote, team uh, to present uh, their version. And of course, they'll be able to uh, ask questions of the uh, legal experts and perhaps even supply their own. So in other words, it'd be a multi-dimension to this whole situation. 
the uh, Democrats were not goaded into having uh, a quote-unquote uh, what he termed a star chamber, kangaroo court, uh, whatever. So he can't appear there. Some people say, well, obviously he wouldn't appear. Lawyer would not let him appear. Uh, that uh, we see as flummery. I would not let him appear to answer questions and be cross-examined, but to make a statement. And by just often to make the statement, he would virtually force the committee to receive him. Uh, they could, if they said, well, we're not going to receive you, he would say, well, I offered to come there and present my case, period, and let my legal team take care of the rest. Anyway, a little comment on that. We'll move uh, now to uh, some of the polling. Uh, this is out of New Hampshire. A number of uh, polls out here. And these polls are just uh, uh, posts at this particular time in history. They are changing uh, constantly. And this is from Emerson polling across from literally the uh, Common in Boston. The headline here is New Hampshire 2020. Sanders jumps the lead. Mia Pete surges while Warren and Biden slip. This is in New Hampshire. You're going to see a lot of this up and down kind of stuff. This is uh, the Emerson poll with WHDH7 News. It finds a major uh, shakeup in New Hampshire primary with Bernie Sanders leading at 26%, followed by uh, Mia Pete at 22%. Former uh, VP uh, Biden and Liz Warren are at 14%. They're tied up. Telsey Gabbard is at 6%, and Yang is at 5%, and the other candidates are below 5%. So this, is, this, is, this is kind of interesting, but we are moving past November, and some of those other candidates, uh, Harris has 4%, Steyer has 3%, Amy Klobuchar at 2%, Senator Booker at 2%, Bloomberg at 1%, Marion Williams from Shield always be in the meet at 1%. And someone else gets 2%. The major shift uh, from Emerson's last New Hampshire poll in September when Biden led with 24%, followed by Liz Warren with uh, 11%. And uh, Bernie Sanders, uh, he was at uh, 13%, to 13 is where he's went up. And Bruno George has doubled uh, his uh, from 11% at that time, plus 11 anyway. From uh, Dr. Kimball, who is the director of polling, said the Democratic voters have taken a look at Joe Biden and Liz Warren, and they appear unsatisfied at this time, which brings some voters back to Bernie Sanders, while others are now moving to fresh face. Mayor Petey, uh, this demonstrates the finality of uh, the race. Sanders has retaken the strong leads amongst those under 50 in New Hampshire, now leading to 38% of the support amongst that group. Following him uh, him amongst uh, younger voters is uh, Warren at 16%, Mia Peely at uh, 12%, Biden at 8%. Mia Pete leads with those 50 and over with 32% of the uh, vote. That's kind of interesting there. Following uh, uh, amongst younger voters is Warren at 16%. He has 12%. Uh, Biden has 8%. Uh, and that is followed by the 50 and older, followed by uh, Joe Lunchbox Biden at 19%. 15% uh, for uh, Bernie and 11% for Liz Warren. Sanders uh, show, holds a strong lead amongst registered Democrats as uh, he garners 31% of support amongst this group, followed by Mayor Petey. And Biden uh, with uh, 17, Warren with 15 amongst independents. The uh, Mia is at 29% of support, followed by Sanders at 21, Warren at 12, and Biden at only uh, 10. Looking within ideology, Sanders leads amongst those who are very liberal. Very liberal in this poll means progressive, 47% of the support, followed by Warren with 18%, Mia Peavy at uh, at 12 and Biden at only 7 amongst itself described those as somewhat liberal Mia Petey and, and this is his uh, right of center of moderate campaign bears this out at 28% followed by uh, Bernie at 25% Warren 18% Biden at 12 amongst moderate and conservative voters this is where he would lead 23% of the vote there followed by Biden 18 Senate 17 and Telsey Gabbard uh Interesting, at 11% there. She's a very unusual uh, type of person there. 
that has uh, some following uh, on uh, some of the uh, uh, supremacist sites uh, that they follow her. And her positions, uh, some of them have been troubling to people uh, that support Black Lives Matter. She's from Hawaii, incidentally. And amongst those who supported Hillary Clinton, uh, Biden leads with 29%. The mayor with uh, 20%, Warren 17%, Bernie with 14%. Of those who supported uh, Sanders in uh, 2016, 40% still supporting, 23% support the little mayor, and 14% support Liz Warren. Interesting. And 6% of Biden. When asked if there's a chance they could change their mind, uh, a majority, 55% of Democratic primary voters, indicate they're open to a different candidate. 45% are uh, set on their current candidate. The Santa supporters are more committed to their candidate. 65% saying they will definitely vote for him. Warren supporters follow with uh, 47%. And the mayor has uh, 40%. Uh, Biden has been with only 36%. Not too good there. Uh, the former uh, governor, uh, Patrick and uh, Bloomberg, both reddish to support at 0 and 1%, 1% respectively. Uh, that's just a few weeks after entering there. Um, Democrat uh, base to consider new candidates. 71% of the voters say there are too many candidates running compared to 7% who believe there should be more. Trump's uh, disapproval uh, sets at 53% on change from the last poll. President's approval uh, ranges from uh, 40 to 42%. That would be the same uh, situation uh, that you uh, will see in uh, many other polls. Sununu, the uh, disapproval is at 30 uh, in the Republican primary. Trump leads at 84 percent of the vote. That's going down a little bit. He used to be at almost, what, 95 or something like that. Former uh, governor, Bill Ware, the Commonwealth at 13. And Joe Walsh at 3 percent there. Respondents in the poll were given head-to-head uh, matchups, uh, leading Democratic candidates. Half of the poll was given an undecided option. With the undecided option, uh, uh, Bernard Judge uh, leads uh, Trump by six points. Biden and Sanders lead Trump by four points. And Yang and uh, Warren uh, both trail by two points with the undecided option, including Sanders leads uh, Trump at 49 to 42, the mayor 48 to 41, Warren 47 to 43, Yang and Biden 46 to 42. According to uh, Spencer Kimball, he directs the polls, said this data suggests that there might be a shy Trump vote as a shy, as a Trump's numbers improve when the undecided options uh, were not offered. This is uh, something we will continue to monitor as we look ahead uh, to head-to-head uh, balloting. Well, that, that actually could be out there. And you look at some of these numbers here. Uh, this is head-to-head uh, without the undecideds. A little different situation here. And you have uh, the mayor at 53%, D.J. Trump at, uh, what, 47 With Biden, Biden is 52%, D.J. Trump is 48%. Bernie Sanders, 52 uh, D.J. Trump is 48%. And Yang is at 49 and D.J. Trump's at 51 He's beating him there. And with Liz Warren, uh, she's at 49 and D.J. Trump's at 51 and this is more uh, whiff undecideds are there. A little different uh, situation here. Bernie's at 49 and D.J. Trump's at 42. The onshore at 9% there. Which way will they go is a big question there. 48% uh, with the, with the uh, little mayor from South Bend. 41% with Trump. Trump and Warren. Uh, Warren at 47. Trump at 43. 10% onshore there. That that is something, yeah. Uh, Professor Kimball's correct on that. Yang is at forty six. Trump is at uh, forty two. On sure is at twelve percent. Yeah, well, he'll never get in there anyway. Uh, Biden's at forty six and forty two for Trump. The onshore is at thirteen percent. That makes it really, at this time that makes it a fairly shaky uh, race uh, for Joe Lunchtop Bi- Biden uh, lunchbox. Gene Sheehan leads a potential challenger. Oh, this is uh, by 12 points. This is Cody, uh, Corey, excuse me, Ludwinski. 
a Trump man. She holds a strong uh, lead amongst independents in this matchup, uh, 54 to 30. A majority of New Hampshire voters have either been watching or following the impeachment, 73 percent there, uh, with a high percentage, 47, supporting impeachment than uh, opposing it, 9% of voters are unsure. But it's still a very large uh, piece of voters asked their opinion whether or not Trump should be impeached has changed uh, since the start of the hearing. 17% report their opinions have shifted. Of those have changed their mind, 64% have moved in support of impeachment compared to 27% now oppose it. Democratic uh, primary voters, the top issue is health care at 23%. Followed by the environment at 20%, social issues at 18%, economy at also 18%, impeachment uh, just uh, 5% of Democrats has a top issue, not a very top one for the Republicans. Top issues economy at 45%, uh, followed by uh, immigration at 16%, health care at 10 foreign uh, policy and terrorism is only at 7%, independence. Have the economy is a top issue at 32% ahead of health care at 24 environment 11 social issues at just 9%. Let's move along here and see if we can grab up another poll here. I mean, this is a CNN poll. I won't spend a lot of time on the CNN poll. Uh, shows Biden leads uh, the mayor amongst uh, most Democrats. Uh, I don't know, that headline is kind of suspicious at the best. And we'll have to go back uh, to that poll. There's a survey USA poll. Hopefully we can get it up here. We'll go with it. And then we'll go back to real clear politics. And uh, just dive into the CNN poll. CNN polls are kind of an interesting uh, ecosystem within themselves. Uh, they tend to not be very reliable polls. Uh, we wouldn't use it as, quote unquote, the piece uh, hopefully on the, uh, the this week we'll have uh, Nate Silver. I hadn't been to him in a long time there, uh, and see what uh, the uh, latest is uh, from his uh, particular site, and uh, we'll we'll look uh, to that and see where it is. But as far as New Hampshire, you have you know have December to go here, and uh, we'll look. Now, this is uh, the the big question here is, uh, this is uh, Survey USA, what European middle class uh, primary voters are uh, trying to say. Uh, kind of interesting here. Uh, our bloopers, our unexpected uh, baby, uh, grand babies that can take boom off Biden, a rose for Democrats, despite while uh, Warren and Sanders uh Set due for second place nationally, Booner Judge leaps into Forbes, dubbing his support, according to this. So, we'll uh, take a look here and see where we are. Ten weeks uh, to the Iowa caucus, likely uh, Democratic uh, voters nationwide can't quit Joe Biden. That's according to the uh, Survey USA new uh, poll here. Immediately after 11-20, uh, 2019, Democratic candidate debate in uh, Atlanta. Though Biden's children now uh, suddenly a grandchild uh, reason, Biden continues to demonstrate to all who pay attention that he struggles to express himself. And though Republicans see him as a punching bag, Biden's poll numbers uh, in four consecutive USA Today uh, USA survey USA uh, tracking polls. Biden has never polled higher than 33 percent. Never polled higher than uh, lower than 32 percent. Very interesting there. Nothing like pants on fire. Like Democratic primary voters stick with the devil. They know Biden has led in every survey USA nationwide poll by 15 points. Given a chance to choose any Democrat still in the race, but before uh, Michael Bloomberg. He's added to the mix, likely primary voters. Second thoughts are about uh, Liz Warren, who dropped uh, six points from October to November and now polls at 16. Uh, and Bernie Sanders, who's in third place, polling at uh, third consecutive month, polls at 17%. The mayor, PD has uh, been both uh, at 5% in both uh, September and October. But today, uh, as people said at their Thanksgiving table, rest ahead of the uh, pact behind Warren and seven uh, points ahead of Kamala Harris. 
combinations of Booker and Harris uh, on the debate stage have support of 12% of African Americans. Biden is backed by 53% of African Americans. Biden uh, was uh, backed uh, by uh, 35% of African Americans in September, and now uh, 53%. In uh, November, uh, only 1% support Mayor Peavy. That in itself is a very interesting situation here. Amongst older Democratic voters, six, uh, 65 and older, uh, Biden is at 43, but uh, Mayor Peavy has now leapfrogged uh, Warren. And Warren's support amongst uh, seniors was halving from 26 to 12% between September and November. And the uh, the mayor is at 16% amongst Democrats who tell you uh, survey USA. They are uh, getting uh, by uh, by Biden is at four percent. Warren is, is is down. Excuse me, down by four. Warren is about five, and uh, Boone Judge is up by nine. Who say they are prospering? Uh, Warren loses eleven points month over month, and the mayor uh, fourteen points uh, from four there and. Sanders, who is running at 20%, and second to Biden at 33. Amongst suburban men, the mayor leapfrogs uh, Warren and is effectively even with Sanders for second place behind Biden. 81% of likely uh, Democratic primary voters say they're happy with the choices they have for president. And of those who are unhappy, most often mentioned, mentioned is Hillary Clinton and Michelle Obama. Obama, excuse me, didn't even want to running. And we have, let's see, what else do we have here? Riaz primary votes who they prefer, uh, prefer with uh, Bloomberg. Deval Patrick uh, added to the existing lineup. 4% of Andrew Yang and uh, normally head of Booker at 2%. Bloomberg siphons uh, 1% of every uh, Warren voter. Uh, Patrick finishes last, uh, normally behind uh, Amy Klobuchar and... Uh, Tom Steyer, excuse me, and uh, Tulsi Gabbard in this poll. What gender levels here uh, of the poll itself was 81% male, 73% female, and this is uh, one of the, are you, oh, excuse me, are you ready to vote? Okay. Anyway, um, of the 18-year-olds, the 34-year-olds, 69% are registered to vote, and so forth and so on. If there were a primary election today uh, for President of the United States, certain to vote in the Republican primary, uh, 41% of the males, 30% of the females, certain to vote in the Democratic primary, 41 and uh, of the males, and four, uh, 52 of the females. Okay, a little deep dive in here. We won't do a lot on this poll. Never been a fan of Survey USA. And if you break these down, uh, Joe Biden, Lunchbox Biden... Is at 32 in this. Liz Warren at 17. Yeah, and Bernie Sanders at 16. Statistical tie there. The mayor uh, at 12. Carmela Harris has four, and uh, let's see, uh, five. Excuse me. And Andrew Yang has four percent. Uh, Amy Klobuchar two percent. Telsa Gabbard still in the mix. She's got two percent. Tom Steyer has got two percent, and Julian Castro is still at one percent. He on the side still at four percent. So forth and so on. Let's do a little more cross tabbing here. This is this getting by uh, percentage of he, uh, people falling far into debt. Nine percent of the males, eleven percent of the females getting by. Twenty seven percent of the males and thirty percent of the females. Oh boy. Setting aside something for a rainy day. Twenty five percent and twenty two prospering. Ten percent and of the males. And 6% of the females, I'm not sure. Oh, well, that hell of a shape there. <laughs> anyway, um, if we get the total numbers of these, both male and females, uh, falling far behind 10%, getting by uh, 29%, making ends meet 28%, setting aside something for a rainy day, 24%. And that is not good here. And if we get into a racial situation here, um, falling far behind uh, 11% of the Europeans, 11% of the African Americans, 8% of the uh, Latinos, getting by 29% of the Europeans, 27% of the African Americans, and 30% of the Latinos, making ends meet. Uh, 
27% of the Europeans, 33% of the African Americans, 30 that would be the getting by, making ends meet, setting uh, something aside, 24% of the Europeans, 21% of the African Americans, 19% of the Latinos. Uh, prosperity here, 8% of the Europeans, 7% of the African Americans, 10% of the Latinos. Um... Uh, 29% of the people in this poll were Republicans, 37% were Democrats, 2% were other, 25% were Independents. This is all, we won't go into that. Very conservative, 10%, conservative, 22%. Moderates, and you see how this is weighted, 36% were moderates, 11% were liberals. And uh, 8% were very liberal, which I think they call progressives. And 7% didn't know where they were. What best describes a you of uh, president? Let's see what it is. 32% voted for D.J. Trump. Uh, 34% voted uh, for Hillary Clinton. And 8% someone else. And 23% did not vote. Hmm. 27%. Uh, this is all category uh, college, uh, high school types. Uh, 37%. This is a new category. Some college. 35% had degrees and... 41% less than $40,000, 40000 to 80000 36%, over 80000 uh, 24% there. Single people in here were 37%, married people 46%, no longer married 17 And people under, uh, had children under 18, 33% of them did, uh, 66% said they did not. And single parents were 9% of this poll, 91% were not. And the religious breakdown, uh, 26% were uh, uh, Protestants, 20%, 23% Catholics and others, and no organized religion, 31%, fairly high number there. Uh, what, 21% uh, regular church types, occasionally church types were 28%, almost never uh, about half, 48% of the poll. And evangelical types, uh, God boys and God girls, uh, yes, 26%, and no, uh, 69%. Abortion, are you on abortion? Uh, strong pro-life, 28%. Uh, Pro-choice, 33%. In the middle, 32%. This is a more conservative. Do you belong to a labor union? Only 11% of the people in here did, and 87% uh, did not. Military types of veterans, a fairly large number, 18% there. We're active military or veterans, I see. Eh, well, 81%. Is someone in your household uh, gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender? 11% yes, 87% no. Breakdown urban, uh, 29%. Suburban, 47%. Rural, a fairly large uh, 24%. There's so much for that poll. Let's get back over here to the uh, real clear and we'll do this again and break down one of those polls that we missed. We did the Emerson poll. Uh, this is in New Hampshire. Uh, Bernie was ahead by four points there. The little mayor from South Bend at 22. Bernie at 26. Warren had dropped to 14 and Biden had dropped to 14. Tulsa Gabbard had moved up at 6% and the rest are pretty much where they are. Now the CNN poll, uh, Biden is up by 11 Bernie's at 17, Warren is at 14, and the mayor is at 11. Harris is at 3, Yang is at 3, Bloomberg is at 3 in this poll. Amy Klobuchar, Senator Booker is at 2. And Tils Kelsey Gabbard, wait a minute here. Oh no, she didn't register this one. We gave a CS Survey USA, let's drop down here. To uh, California, uh, Biden's ahead by 10 there. And uh, Warren has 13, uh, Bernie has 18, Harris has 10, William Judge has only 8 in California. And we look at these general election. I think we gave the matchups here. Um, Biden, Trump, uh, Biden's up by 13, Sanders, Trump's at 12, this is Survey USA. General election here, Warren's up by 7, the mayor is the same place at 7, Harris is at 5, Bloomberg is at 6, well, they'll be watching that very closely. And New Hampshire, Biden uh, is, uh, this is WHDH, uh, Biden's up by four on DJ Trump, uh, Warren is down by two, New Judge is by six, um, 
Trump's up by two over Andrew Yang, which will never take place. This is in California, uh, Biden by 27 over Trump, Sanders by 26. Trump is not in the making out there. And uh, the the mayor is at 18, Harris is at 22, and Bloomberg is at 16 points above him. And the approval rating, uh, this is YouGov. Uh, DJ Trump is at his 44 there, and the generic ballot, Democrats are ahead. So basically, we can look at that. Here's a Boston Globe, uh, Suffolk. And this is what, New Hampshire? Uh, Bernie's ahead by two. Uh, yeah, Bernie's ahead uh, by two. Warren's at 14, and Little Mayor's at 13. And the Quantiac poll here, basically, Biden's up by eight. This is the national poll. Um, and Bernie is at 13, Warren is at 14, uh, Little Mayor is at 16 in this poll. They're all over the place. And then we get in the morning consult, Biden's up by 9, Bernie is at 21, uh, and Warren is at 15, the Little Mayor is at 9, Harris is at 5, Bloomberg has 2 with Amy Klobuchar, Booker, and Tom Steyer. So these basically those and some job approval rating. CNN has DJ Trump. A at 43, Rasmussen, uh, Quanti- Quantiac at 40, Rasmussen at 46. They're always going to be higher. And the morning consult are Politico at 40. So DJ Trump languishes in those uh, areas. Let's take a little break here. Well, we'll take a break here. WBRN Radio. We have a couple of things here from the uh, Washington Post uh, set up here. I'm just looking at some of the headlines, um, testimony uh, records uh, raise questions about the ambassador's account of Trump's quo call. This is some of the line here, the re- recollection of a phone call that uh, he said took place on the 9th of September has emerged as the center pl- centerpiece of the president's uh, defense. But the White House has not located a record of the call between Trump and Sunderland that day. Be interesting. There'll be a lot of little things uh, brought out here as they look at it. Uh, much uh, a broader situation. I think we have a little piece here on uh, the little mayor, Boone Judge. I, we'll do this on the week that was. So we'll have more time there. Mia Pete, oops. Says uh, being a gay helps him relate uh, to black or African American struggle, but some reject that notion. Has been a a big schism within the African American community when you start talking about uh, victimism, uh, struggles of people, and the uh, situation involving the color of one's skin, which is well documented in American history, as opposed to someone that had uh, that had or has. Of what is known as white privilege, and now that it gets to be a big issue uh, in primaries, uh, perhaps in say uh, you're dealing in, uh, uh, we'll kind of segue this, but tomorrow in uh, New Hampshire and in Iowa, it doesn't mean as much, but nationwide, it has a lot of difference. This Washington Post uh, has a, a picture of the mayor and the national leader, uh, Dr. Al Sharpton. This an event was in Atlanta, Georgia. But this uh, this is uh, a national uh, note to make here. National race courses run much much differently than say uh, a pri- I should say a national the national uh, Democratic race is different is run much differently than if an audience in uh, Iowa, Iowa, or New Hampshire. New Hampshire and Iowa are both uh, basically uh, rural states. A lot of it is rural. And a little different uh, in New Hampshire, of course, the news comes from Boston. And in uh, Iowa, depending on what part of Iowa you're from, uh, particularly around the Quad Cities up in, uh, that are adjacent to Quad Cities, Iowa City, etc., that comes out of Chicago. I know Jesse, when he was running, he, he used to broadcast... Uh, via from Operation Push the radio stations into Iowa. Some of those stations, uh, Des Moines is further down, but still uh, from uh, Iowa City to Des Moines, some of that is the influence of Chicago stations. So again, you get a little different situation there. But if we sort of look at um, uh, the race uh, as you turn into 
Erie is at a, a totally different uh, Nevada, which is a uh, more diverse area. A lot of Latinos there, union organized people coming in and out of that area. Not as many African Americans, but when you go to South Carolina, follows O.J. Simpson, African Americans there, and virtually all the other uh, uh, places that the Democrats will go, like into Texas, very very fluid there. And this is where this situation would would uh, would come in uh, to that and comparing the two is a totally a different uh, situation because again the point they make out is and evidently this happened with old mayor pete he didn't come out as a gay man until after he was elected mayor in a south bin and his i think his re-election or his election were only 8,000 something votes a city of 100,000 people fairly small city when you start talking about so this in itself is a totally different kind of situation and how the race should be approached it shouldn't be approached as a an anti uh, gay or anti uh, uh, type of race here uh, anti gay anti queer nation what do you want to call it GTB I always get those initials wrong. It shouldn't be run as that kind of race. Uh, Mia Pete should be looked at for his political positions. Now, if you look at him from his political positions, he is uh, to the right of the moderates, of most of the moderates, of the right of what we'll call the moderates in the race. Now, we look at the moderates, so-called moderates in the race, who are traditional liberals. Uh, we'll look at Joe Biden. Amy Klobuchar is in that mix Senator Booker, to a certain extent, uh, he's trying to be a moral leader. Well, we'll debate on that. His numbers have been very low, and, and part of that is he doesn't have the name recognition. That is a very big problem. It's the same situation that haunts uh, Amy Klobuchar, but in the sense that uh, there are some states that are close to Midwest states, she's there. Uh, in Iowa in particular, she should be doing... And in some polls, she is starting to get uh, Iowa close into the uh, double digits. Mia Booker is not. Now, what happens if uh, Joe Biden uh, uh, doesn't come out very good in Iowa, Iowa or New Hampshire? Probably not a lot, uh, because the momentum out of Iowa is not what it used to be. Nor New Hampshire... And since they set up Super Tuesday, it'd be very interesting to see how Joe Biden, a lot of that depends obviously on the funding. And Bloomberg enters the picture, is chasing the same voters, or some of the same voters, as a Joe Biden. Uh, Bloomberg uh, vote as far as African Americans, he's in the same ballpark with Mayor Pete, although he's going to have much more money. And these are the issues that you look at Mayor Pete and his close association with Facebook which is intolerable. Those are the issues they should be bringing out, but the corporate media is trying to say, well, these African Americans are basically going to abuse uh, Mia Pete. And as a national leader, Al Sharpton says, no, uh, the African American community is not homophobic. (laughs) And that is actually there. But now, you know, you get into some religious parts of the African American community, different situation. Same thing. Now, they have not talked about the evangelicals and Mia Pete. You notice this. There's a lot of racism involved in this scheme, also. They have highlighted that. I assume they're trying to convince some people that that is sort of like uh, how uh, more indirect and more insidious situation than how Hillary Clinton uh, played the. Uh, race card there and it basically a lot of this is about that situation in other words a wedge the whole candidacy we looked at as a platform of Mia Pete is a wedge between the progressive community the liberal community communities of color basically business versus the rest of us this is why Mia Pete doesn't support uh, such things as Medicare for all the Green New Deal uh, spotlighting a military service which he hardly had any of now he's on what his religious religion says well you gotta, you gotta argue with him on what his religion says these evangelicals are going into the white house praying for dj trump so in other words that drum has been beaten uh, many 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 times 
out there. So this kind of leaves an interesting situation as we are going into the last program for uh, November as we go into December. You, the impeachment will slow down, perhaps. But at the same time, you have the holiday season. We just finished Turkey Day. Now we go to uh, Black Friday, local buying Saturday, and then Cyber Monday. And then the holidays get in uh, earnest. Congress, of course, is on a break. And people have been in campaigns during the holiday season. People pay attention. They don't. Now, the holiday season is very good. Uh, we found that before. We were running a campaign once, uh, I think, in Texas, where we were out uh, greeting people with the uh, Salvation Army uh, bell ringers for a congressional candidate. And the congressional candidate did very well. Followed a similar uh, pattern of what Bloomberg is going to follow, although we did go out and engage in a retail uh, politics, which in itself was a little bit different at the time, uh, but using television commercials. And he had a Christmas commercial out there. Now, whereas uh, Bloomberg is, what is he put, $30 million in so far, and then he'll continue on. He's advised, obviously, to do that. Uh, but who does that uh, actually hurt? Well, that that's going to be an interesting situation there. Is he actually making any traction on voters that would normally vote for Joe Biden, for instance? We'll start to look very, very closely at Ukrainian affair. Does that affect Joe Biden? Now, obviously, uh, Trump will try to put that into his uh, commercials. But once again, Ukraine is kind of a of a uh, leap because it's in the foreign policy uh, situation. Whether DJ Trump decided he was the uh, wider. Uh, there of, of Kiev or not uh, <laughs> to deal with uh, corruption inside uh, trade, uh, inside uh, political cronyism or what have you. Now it comes out uh, Giuliani, his lawyer, was also not only out there uh, promoting a foreign policy as a uh, on behalf of Trump, but at the same time he was engaging uh, business for the law firm. So that is something that has to play itself out. Uh, during the holidays and eventually the holidays will be over after New Year's Eve and then you get down to about three weeks of of uh, solid campaigning depending on the climate in Iowa you know, Iowa is one of these places they can have snowstorms and not have snowstorms remember when the old Hillary Clinton bought all these brooms for the little old ladies that sweep the snow off the sidewalks I don't know why it's, or shovels excuse me not brooms uh and there was no snow. And evidently, uh, the vendor that sold the uh, shovels, I don't know if that's that vendor ever got paid. Uh, <laughs> and what happened to the shovels, no idea. Uh, it's stuck in a warehouse. I guess they probably got sold by now. But anyway, that that's kind of how you prepare for Iowa. And of course, New Hampshire, you can have snows there. Uh, but the people of New Hampshire are more accustomed to the snows. And the way things are right now... Um, large storm coming out of Canada, I-5. Incidentally, that is the coastal highway. Uh, the modern coastal highway in California, parts of it were closed. That's on the Oregon border, and you take that all the way down to L.A. Uh, and then you have 101. Anyway, I used to like to drive 101. So that's kind of a, that's kind of an over uh, view or look at, at where we are. Incidentally, one more thing here. Arsenal, uh, the football soccer team, lost seven in a row. We'll have more sport on the African uh, leagues, etc., tomorrow night on the uh, week that was. And we'll have a numbers man uh, program up there. So we pretty much are getting things uh, straight here over these holidays. Again, uh, happy uh, holidays uh, to all. This is Boston Red and Jerry Pippen. Broadcast booth on the uh, 29th of November, 2000. 19. Good day.